Hello and welcome to another video on basic fiber optics. Today we're going to discuss load locking. First of all, let's consider the spectrum of a very well-behaved DFB laser, which only emits a single narrow frequency range here. So in that case, the output is going to look basically like a cosine function, where we can see the electric field oscillates over time with a constant amplitude. Everything looks very, very clean and very orderly. Now let's imagine what happens if we add more frequency lines to this spectrum. In that case, we can see that the output is going to look more like a pulse train. We get individual spikes separated by some, uh, some time and very low intensity in between. And so if you add a few more frequency components and they all oscillate in sync without any phase offset inside the cosine functions, we can see we get an even cleaner pulse train coming out with no intensity here and then a very, a very bright spike all of a sudden. Now let's see what happens if we introduce random phase offsets inside of each of these cosine functions. In that case, you can see that we get a very uh, chaotic output, very unpredictable, like so, and uh, it's not as nice as the, the previous ones. So essentially, in this case, we have what's called mode locking, because every one of these frequency modes has the same phase offset. And here we don't have any mode locking, because all of the different frequency components have different phase offsets. Now, I found a very nice animation on Wikipedia that sort of illustrates what's going on here. On top, we have a laser cavity with different allowed frequency modes oscillating on the inside. And because they're all in sync, we can see that they in total add up to the electrical field signal we see down here, with it's just a single pulse bouncing back and forth between the two walls. And you can probably imagine that if this wall here is not completely reflected but has a bit of transmission, then the output from this laser cavity is just going to be a pulse train. So now we generate another pulse and then we have to wait a bit for it to bounce back and forth, giving us another pulse with a very sort of consistent repetition rate. But of course, if one of these, um, or I guess more, one or more of these frequencies sort of drift out of phase, the output is going to look much more like this, which is less clean. So of course, there's different ways that you can achieve mode locking between different frequency components. I think one of the most interesting ones these days is um, microresonators. The idea is to create a ring-shaped structure on some kind of glass substrate, and then run an optical fiber past it. If you then send continuous wave light into the optical fiber past the resonator, you can excite one of the frequency modes inside of the resonator. And then because of nonlinearity inside of the resonator, you'll transfer energy from the central frequency line coming in into all the neighboring allowed modes here. And because they're all sort of generated based on this one uh, central frequency being launched in, we know that they're all going to be uh, in phase and have mode locking sort of by, by default. So the nice thing is that this actually causes um, the output of the resonator to be a uh, pulse train. It just actually fills out the, the main CW frequency. And of course, you can imagine that having this um, electrical signal or electrical field signal that consists of evenly spaced frequency modes with and in some domain like very um what can you say very consistent uh, pulse train with a spacing that's equal to the uh, comb separation here is useful for a lot of different experiments like timekeeping and spectroscopy and, and, and whatnot. So um, if you found this interesting check out some of my other videos on fiber optics and stay tuned for more content. Bye bye.